Jason Recorder. Mayor Roland Dykes. Here. Last Mayor Connie Ball. Here. Alderman Mike Hansel. Here. Alderman Oliver. Here. Alderman Randy Reagan. Here. Alderman Steve Smith. Here. City Attorney Perry Hurst. Here. City Administrator James Pinchon. Here. Thank you, Tina. A copy of the minutes from the regular session of September 12th, 2023 has been in, in your packet. You've had a chance to peruse those. We'll entertain a motion to approve those minutes as presented. Motion. Second. Okay, we have a motion on the board to approve those minutes as presented from the regular session of September 12th, 2023. It has been properly seconded. Please signify your acceptance by the normal sign of aye. Aye. Nays like sign. Hearing none, motion carries. Proclamations and a re recognition of citizens. I only have one thing to say. Uh, the I want to commend uh, Tenova Hospital for uh, their this week recognizing that this is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Uh, you see, all of our councilmen and our city attorney are all dressed in pink today. That is in commendable and is made to commemorate Breast Cancer Awareness Week. I commend everyone and to recognize it. And if you have someone in your family that would like to be tested, there is a, a mammogram bus that is, will be on be here, I think next week. So we, we want everybody to uh, please, if you have a need, participate. Would any of the council members have anything you'd like to say? We'll move on to communications from city administrator. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, first thing I'd like to report on the street festival. Uh, it was a rousing success. Uh, I know uh, probably all of you made it down for at least a portion of it. I, I know I, I did. And um, I spoke to, I tried to speak to a lot of the vendors that were there and asked them what, you know, what they thought about the festival and how they were doing business wise. Everyone was very positive about uh, the the crowd. Uh, like I said, they had had great sales. Uh, some vendors sold out and had to leave early because they ran out of product. The new bakery down on the corner opened Saturday. They ran out of, of uh, product, and so um, it was very successful from a business standpoint. Also from the public and also from the vendors, I received many, many compliments on downtown about that how good downtown looked, about the progress we've made downtown. One lady said she moved away, she's from here, but she moved away uh, 10 years ago, came back this year and she couldn't, said she could not believe the difference in downtown compared to when she left 10 years ago, she said it looked like a ghost town. And now it's it's being revitalized and she was very happy about that. And so we had tons of, of positive comments uh, about the downtown during, during the festival. And so I just well, I wanted to share that with everybody. The second thing is of a more serious note uh, that I have. I'm sure you all are aware, uh, I know from conversations I've had with you, that uh, Police Chief Maurice Schultz uh, has announced his retirement. He's turned in his retirement papers to the state and his last day will be January the 16th of next year. Um, that puts us on the clock. And so we have to begin the process of the selection of a new police chief. And what I would like to do right now is to set a timeline for that process. Now, uh, the Civil Service Board will meet Thursday night. And I'm going to be at that meeting. I'm going to ask them to uh, start accepting resumes, uh, allow us to start accepting resumes for the position. Uh, to my knowledge, uh, everyone, uh, unless well, unless you're on probation, everyone within the police department will qualify to apply. That's what the civil service charter says. Uh, I'm only aware through the rumor mill of three individuals right now 
that have expressed an interest in, in turning in a resume, but, but you never know, there could be somebody that has not expressed that uh, you know, publicly, but privately is considering it. I don't know. But anyway, I, I'm gonna get with them Thursday evening at six and uh, get them uh, moving in the process. We need to, uh, what I hope to do, uh, if this works for you guys, is uh, accept resumes throughout the month, the, the rest of this month and the first of next month. And uh, we need to set a date for you all to interview. And so uh, I've got two dates picked out here and I was gonna see what would work for everybody, try to find something that would work for everybody. And uh, that's the Monday, November the 27th, and Thursday, November the 30th. If either one of those would work for everybody. That is the last week of November. Now the prior week to that is Thanksgiving, so we don't want to get into the holiday. That's why I went to the last, the last week, because I didn't want to come back another week uh, and shorten the time we could, you know, that we could get the resumes in. About the same time frame? Yeah. So, I mean, what, the 27th or the 30th, whichever one that, that works for everybody. I first started with the 28th and that didn't, the second person I talked to that didn't work with, so. Uh, Those two dates, the 27th is the only day I'll be in town. I'll be in Franklin the 28th, 29th, and 30th. Yeah. 27th works for me. Works for me. Does the 27th work for everybody? At 5.30? Mm -hmm. Okay, now here's, here's what I recommend, but it's y'all's choice, it's y'all's decision. This is my recommendation that uh, we, of course, we've got that set to interview the last Monday in November. That, that way we could have it on the agenda for the December meeting to a point, for you, for you all to a point. And then we would have that person take office January the 2nd, which will be the, you know, the first day back after the holidays. Now Maurice is working the next two weeks. So that way they would have two weeks to be with him for him to kind of brief them and uh, for the answer any questions they have uh, to assist them in the transition to into the office. And then on uh, January the set, take office at midnight on January the 16th. And be after that at, at midnight on January the 16th, they would be officially in charge. But Maurice would still be in charge until then. They they would be in office, but they would not be in charge. They would be working under his tutelage for those first two weeks. And then when he when he effectively goes into retirement at midnight that day, then they would assume the mantle and it would be their baby. Does that work for you guys? Do you think two and weeks ladies? is enough? Well, his, I'm you know. Worried. Do you think two weeks is enough time for you to show someone everything? What, what you're gonna get into, now I'm not trying to just jump around of his answer, but the reason I did it that way is because you're in the holidays. Gotcha. You're gonna have two weeks of holidays. And so, I mean, you're gonna make, you know, you're gonna, you know, that's, if the holidays weren't there, I agree with you. If the holidays weren't there, I think it'd have been good to go ahead and, and let them start, you know, within a short period of time after the December meeting. But you get into two weeks of holidays when everybody, a lot of people take off and, and a lot of times Maurice takes off. And so that was, that's the reason I went beyond January 1st because of all the holidays. But now he, he might have a different answer for that. 
I'm in the office most of the day, those days anyway. I try to be in my office. I think there'll be plenty of time to, uh, was there some things I'll just have to point at and say, you make your decision how you want to do it. Uh, there are things that I'll have to show that have to be done through, especially like the drug fund money, we show like that. Uh, we release it. I'll try to be I think so. Okay. Will the position be advertised? openly for anyone to appoint maybe from the outside or just that's that's going to be up to the civil service board that's going to be discussed thursday night okay we have researched the charter Terry and I have looked at it um, to see what the options are and uh, we are going to, or I, uh, Thursday evening, I'm going to uh, express what the options are as we see it through the charter and give them copies of the charter, which they already have, but may not have it with them that night and, um, and see where it goes. That's all I got. That's your report? Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Hey, right. do we have any reports from committees, members of council, or other officers? Hearing none. We move on to item eight, which is old business or unfinished business. And item A is consideration of second reading of ordinance number 2023-13, budget amendment for the city of Newport. And Mayor, that is ordinance number 2023-13, an ordinance of amending the annual operating budget and capital program of the city of Newport, Tennessee, fiscal year 2023-2024. Second reading. This is on second reading. Council, you've heard, heard the ordinance, heard the reading. What's the board's pleasure? Motion to approve. Second. Okay. We have a motion on the board. It's been properly seconded for consideration of second reading of ordinance number 2023-13, budget amendment for the city of Newport. Okay. Uh, we need a roll call. Alderman Mike Hansel. Yes. Alderman Luana Ottinger. Yes. Alderman Randy Reagan. Yes. Alderman Steve Smith. Yes. Vice Mayor Connie Ball. Yes. Motion carries. Thank Mayor, you. if I could interject, we, we missed a appointment to a board. Oh. Did I? <laughs> yeah, it did. Hmm? I should have caught that myself. Sorry. Yeah. So don't let it happen again. Item six is the appointment of boards, commissions, and committees. Uh, and item A is consideration of reappointment to the Newport Housing Authority, Mr. Richard Harwood. I make a motion to reappoint Mr. Richard Harwood to the board. Second. We have a motion then to, re to reappoint Mr. Richard Harwood to the Newport Housing Authority. It has been properly seconded. Please signify your acceptance by the normal sign of aye. 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 And nays like sign. Hearing none, motion carries. Since I got ahead of myself here, we'll move back to the old business. Item B is consideration of the second reading of ordinance number 2023-14 budget amendment for newport grammar school and that's ordinance number 2023-14 an ordinance of amending the annual operating budget and capital program of the city of newport tennessee fiscal year 2023-2024 for newport grammar school so the reading what's the board's pleasure motion to approve approve the second Okay, we have a motion on the board. It's been properly seconded for consideration of the second reading of ordinance number 2023-14, budget amendment for Newport Grammar School. What, uh, we need a roll call. I'm sorry, didn't. Alderman Mike Hansel? Yes. Alderman Luana Ottinger? Yes. Alderman Randy Reagan? Yes. Alderman Steve Smith? Yes. Vice Mayor Connie Ball? Yes. Motion carries. Item nine is new business. Consideration of first reading of ordinance number 2023-15, budget amendment for Newport Grammar School. 
And that's ordinance number 2023-15, an ordinance of amending the annual operating budget and capital program of the city of Newport, Tennessee, fiscal year 2023-2024 for Newport Grammar School. We have heard the reading of the ordinance. What is the board's pleasure? I'll make a motion. Second. Okay, we have a motion on the board. It's been properly seconded for consideration at first reading of ordinance number 2023-15, budget amendment for Newport Grammar School. We need roll call. Alderman Mike Hansel? Yes. Alderwoman Luana Audinger? Yes. Alderman Randy Reagan? Yes. Alderman Steve Smith? Yes. Vice Mayor Connie Ball? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Item B is consideration of resolution number 2023-06, authorizing the city of newport to participate in the driver's safety grant through public entity partners uh, this is a, a grant that we have uh, applied for for many years uh, through public entity partners all the way back to when they were, were tml and so it is a grant that uh, and the insurance wants you to do this so they they put a, a, a funding mechanism in place that allows you to, to help pay for it and that is they like for you at least every two years to run everybody's driver's license and get their driver's record that drives a city vehicle to see if there's been any changes in their status since the last time so that's it's just it's something that we've applied for many times in the past all right heard, heard the resolution what's the board's pleasure motion to approve second if you have a motion on the board then to has been properly seconded for consideration of resolution number 2023-06 authorizing the city of Newport to participate in the driver's safety grant through public entity partners. Please signify your acceptance by aye. 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 Nays like sign. Hearing none, motion carries. Item C is consideration of the purchase of Newport Utilities property. I know where we were. <laughs> okay, uh, this is this right. Well, I'm at the right spot, right? Yeah, yeah. Just, all right, good. He okay. Got, he, he just rushed <laughs> into the rescue. He uh, he came in just as he went on the agenda. So he's he's been in a meeting in in, in Johnson City. So he had to rush back for this. So he I was beginning to think he wasn't gonna make it, yeah. <laughs> but but he did. Right just in the second. nick of time. Um, Okay, this is, uh, I put the map in with the, with the orange sheet there. This shows the Newport Utilities property down in the industrial park off Cope Boulevard. Uh, it's on the right if this water treatment plant is on the left, um, headed down toward um, uh, all the industry down there. There's a structure on it that can't be used, so basically we're getting it at what it's appraised at, which is $10,000 an acre. Um, the idea is that we're going to do a property swap slash resale to Mr. Nalen, and he's going to relocate his business from the riverfront, which will move forward the development on Main Street as well as the riverfront. Um, I would imagine that we won't complete the sale with Newport Utilities until we have the final agreement in place with Mr. Nalen so that we're just not holding on to these 10-ish acres with nothing to do with them. And um, if for some reason, I'm just thinking like you guys and I think, if for some reason that our developer for Main Street did not move forward with their project because we don't necessarily have a contract that says that if if then if this then this then we still would own the entire riverfront giving us a lot of option on what we do with it, uh, at that point as far as cleanup uh, Tim's got the um, design for riverfront park uh, so lots of options there but this is just taking that next step so that we can procure the acreage from them and then continue and finish our negotiations with Mr. Nalen about doing a property swap. He, we're going to swap him acreage for what, what he's got, for what we've got, and then he'll buy the remainder. Can, he's excited about it. He's had a real good year, year and a half, two years. He wants to expand his operation, and he can't where he's at. And that's, that's good riverfront 
uh, property over there that we need to be able to develop for, uh, I mean, any number of things. So, you guys have got any questions? <coughs> You said the acreage was similar, but there is a, a part of it that would have to be purchased. So we're buying, we're going to, okay, over here you've got, Mr. Nalen's got a little less than an acre. There's a lady that he rents from, leases from, that where a lot of his stuff is on. Most of everything he's got is outside the footprint of his property. So there's two pieces of property over there we'd have to acquire. We're doing property swap with him, acreage for acreage, and he'll buy the remainder in the industrial park and then we would have to then come to an agreement with the lady that owns the property next to his over here but he told us from the get-go that whatever and then you've actually had a conversation like well yeah whatever he says she'll do so if, if he says sell it she'll sell it and then if, if he tells her don't give it to him for nothing then uh, then they'll hang, she'll hang on to it and, and until you know whatever else method we try to do to get it this is something that you know that was started actually under Scott Collins uh, was negotiating to, to try to do a property swap and uh, at first the way I understand it be, by, before Scott left and I came down here in 13 they had an agreement a verbal agreement tentatively in place to do this very thing but it fell apart when uh, I'm not going to get into the details, but it, but it fell apart. And so uh, now we're back to it again. So th this is something that we wanted to do 11 years ago, basically. And, and the negotiation fell apart. And so now it's back on track. And, uh, you know, hopefully it'll stay on track. <laughs> you know, that's, that's kind of where we are now. Yeah, this isn't an agreement to actually make the swap we're just getting the property first and then yeah, we'll have we, to bring the full agreement you, in front of you yeah. guys have to approve yeah. that we purchase the property before we can make we have to own the property before we can make a deal so then that's what Gary was saying that even if the deal falls apart again this time we still have other options for the property and according to the write-up you would like to vote from council to be able to complete the transaction of land and complete negotiations yeah, yeah, we're yeah. Right now, we're just you're telling me I can go and purchase the property from Newport Utilities if we get the agreement in place with Mr. Nalen. Like I said, I don't think we go buy the property in the industrial park that we don't necessarily have use Correct. for. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You've heard the presentation. What's the board's pleasure? I'll make a motion. Okay. Second. Okay. We have a motion on the board then to allow the, uh, the transaction of land and complete negotiations to go forward. It has been properly seconded. Please signify your acceptance by aye. Aye. aye and nays like sign. Hearing none, motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, Gary. Uh, bids, purchases, and expenses. Tim, Tim, you don't have anything to do? <laughs> I have to say thank you for last week. <laughs> it starts on the 20th. Okay. All right, we added item 11 and comments from citizens. I shall speak for the people. Um, <laughs> we uh, which what people? <laughs> oh, folks back there. Okay. Yeah, they're not here for anything controversial. That's uh, usually if there's people here, there's somebody's mad about something. But uh, I actually met with Raven, Monica, and I did a couple of days ago. The, we had been approached about a potential event. It'll be the Saturday after Black Friday in conjunction with the Chamber's Shop Local initiative. Uh, the down, some of the downtown property owners and business owners and, and stakeholders in general have gotten together and sort of formed an informal group thus far uh, of downtown merchants. And they were looking to do an event and we sat down and had a conversation about what that might look like and what our role could be in it. And Monica and I thought that the event, well, so I'll just, I, while we're trying to get our Main Street program or application in our Main Street um, initiative going, one of the things you need is a nonprofit 
um, group of downtown business owners, merchants, stakeholders, etc., that act as a steering committee for what downtown should be, what it should look like, what the events that draw people in, uh, all that kind of stuff is your actual people that are here every day trying to make their living off of downtown. And so uh, I tried it within the first couple of years I was here and just didn't have, there were a couple that were interested, a couple said they're too busy running their business and I get that, but we're at a tipping point I think with downtown. Um, Mr. Fincham shared some comments that he heard from people. I don't know if you went over it in your comments. Yeah, so it, there's some excitement generating around downtown right now. And so um, to get that group together is one thing, but for them to already start to bring themselves together and just maybe be needing a little bit, be in need of a little bit of guidance uh, on how to properly get formed up and get moving, that's a step in the right direction. So. Um, what they want to do is an event that possibly would include closing the street down. We're thinking Jefferson possibly. Uh, have a hub of sorts that would maybe draw people in, hand out a map. This is just the, we, we, right now we've got an idea and not much of a plan, but so we'll have you a plan next month. Um, but uh, give out a map of all the downtown business owners that are wanting to, that want to participate that day for the Small Business Saturday. Uh, food, entertainment, that sort of thing. We're all going to work all that out. But basically, uh, they came to show support for their fledgling group that we're going to help get them 501c3 status That because that'll help our Main Street program. That'll help our Main Street application. That's just going to help everything move forward. And I spent a, a good couple hours this morning talking with Main Street people from all across Tennessee at that rural, rural round table. I hate trying to say it. Um, but uh, basically, we don't need a vote. I just kind of need a head nod and, and a, a silent blessing about moving forward with working with them and possibly planning out this event that I think at worst what it'll do to us is close down the street. And, and you know, other than the street sweeper going and cleaning up after they're gone and Ben bringing it. I didn't know you were here. Uh, bringing the barricade to set it up the night before. It's not a whole lot on us. Um, but Monica and I would help with the planning of it and the formation of the actual who, what, when, and where of it. And we'll bring that all to you next month. So if anyone had any questions about it right now or suggestions or otherwise, um, if, you know, or if you want to be, uh, Mike Hansel has been. Uh, this downtown's been one of his things for a long time, and we're really starting to get there. I know you've been to a couple of stakeholder meetings, and having uh, council representation as part of the group is 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 a big deal. And you may want to do it, or you everybody may want to hop in. I don't know. Um, it's just a, a matter of of coming together with these guys and girls and figuring out exactly how they want their organization to look and run, how it works with how it works with us and for us and how we can benefit them too. When uh, Gary ran this by me, uh, I, I told him I thought it was a good idea. I think that, and I think this past weekend is proof that folks are wanting to come downtown and, and do things. And uh, I, I think the more events that we can get downtown the better for everybody it is. So I, 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 I support this project. We, uh, that our Newport Main Street program, we'd like to see eventually one, one event downtown per quarter. Um, may, not anything on the side, the, not as big as Street Festival, but it could be something as small as shutting down one street, handing out a map and saying, hey, these guys are open, go check them out. But, you know, we've met with, um, where do we go? Elizabethans, downtown people, or Main Street people. Um, I'd met with Jonesboro's Main Street people. Similar size communities, similar uh, layouts downtown, and, and so we've got a lot of really good ideas, and we're, we're fit the formula to, to work with what we've got. And, um, you know, and she's, she's the type A to my type B, so when I say, oh, I wish they would do this, she'll say, hey, could you do this, please? And then, like, it gets moving forward better than me just standing back going, man, I hope they just do that because I ask them nice. <laughs> uh, one thing I noticed with the street festival, even far back as the Christmas parade, people were parking far off to come to it. And I think when people uh, do that, that makes a statement. It's something that they want to do. So uh, keep it coming. Yeah, that, yeah, that came up Monday because... 
Yes, sir. I hear the I hear it all the time from people that don't know better to say, we don't, I don't think we ought to park in, but we do. I haven't done an official parking study, but right now we do. Now, when we add density, when we build new buildings uh, and rehab existing ones over here from Woodlawn um, over toward uh, Woodlawn heading west, and yeah, we're we're possibly going to need more parking. But that just shows you people will park down, you know, half a mile to walk to something. We don't have to park right in front of where we're going anymore. It, that, that those days are uh, behind us at this point. I saw uh, Saturday. I saw uh, people parking at Walgreens and walking down to the street festival all the way through town to get to it. And one one group was like a family of five. It was uh, uh, a mom and dad and three kids. And I watched to see did they go when they got out on the sidewalk. I didn't stay. They went all the way through town, but they they kept going. They were going on by the uh, Long John's as I drove away they were going down and that, that nowhere else they could be going. <coughs> when I left Saturday um, there were people actually starting to park at the ConAgra parking lot and walking that far. Yeah, that, the, the city was yeah Food City was completely, yeah, full, completely full when, yeah. when I came through Saturday. I wanted to get so big I have to charge people to park in my yard near the park. Like I think that's where we're headed. And I'm okay with it. <laughs> Maybe we'll accomplish that. <laughs> uh, any other questions? Or? Yeah, unless somebody just tells me absolutely not, then we'll move forward. We good with that? All right. Thank you all. Looks like you got the head nods, so. Okay. Are there any other comments from citizens? Mayor, I'd just like to say that I think in my life when I deserve a long distance travel order, we rode 180 miles on a motorcycle from Miller, Georgia to come to the street festival. So. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll note it and we'll pass it on to the, to the uh, chamber <laughs> partnership. Any other comments? If not, we'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. I'll say we are adjourned.